All right, welcome. I'm Tim Scoggins, Chairman of the Shaftesbury Select Board, and I am calling this meeting to order at 6.30 on Monday, June 19th, 2017. First item of business is to check with our board and see if anyone has a conflict of interest with anything appearing on the agenda this evening. No. 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 Uh, item three is approval of minutes. We have a, a staff up here. Uh, the first one is from May 1st. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from May 1st as circulated? So moved. Second Sorry. by Tony, second by Art. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I had uh, in the copy that is here, I had Dave correct the spelling of uh, Rob Stewart's name and add the RFP to the minutes. So that's included. Any other changes or corrections to the minutes on May 1st? All in favor of approval say aye. 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 The minutes from May 1st are approved by a vote of 5 0 0. We have um, minutes from our meeting on May 15th that were circulated. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to approve by Tony. Second. Seconded by Art. Any additions, additions or corrections to the minutes on May 15th? That was just the... That's the that was a regular meeting. Oh, that was the regular meeting, yes. Yeah, the special meeting was the 30th. We'll get to that. No. All in favor of approving the minutes for May 15th, say aye. 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 Those minutes are approved by a vote of 5 0 0. We had a special meeting on May 30th to uh, pay bills. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from May 30th as circulated? I to stay. Oh. Oh, I move. Motion to approve from Arda. Seconded by Ken. Any additions or corrections to the minutes on May 30th? All in favor of approving the minutes for May 30th say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Abstaining. Tony. So the minutes for May 30th are approved by a vote of 401. And we have minutes from our last meeting on June 5th. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to approve from Tony. Second. Second by Art. Any additions or corrections to the minutes from June 5th? Uh, I just would point out that uh, the minute, the, uh, the resolution for uh, Mr. Finney uh, will be included in the minutes. It's in the book waiting for the minutes to be approved. So that will be included. All in favor of approving the minutes for June 5th, say aye. 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 Those minutes are approved 5 0 0. And that brings us up to date on the minutes. Warrants. I have payroll warrant number 25 in the amount of 18000 $890.15. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Tony. Second. Second by Art. Any discussion? All in favor of approving payroll warrant number 25 say aye. 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 Payroll warrant number 25 in the amount of $18,890.15 is approved by a vote of 500. I also have check warrant number 40 in the amount of $88,701.55. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Tony. Second. Seconded by Art. Major items on this one are uh, $1,800 to 83 Buck Hill Road, LLC. That's the rental for the back here. It all came at once, several months worth. Okay. Uh, $5,700 to Blue Cross Blue Shield, 
$1,300 to Bennington County Sheriff. Uh, 9800 to Catamount Environmental. That would be for the asbestos of yeah. the teardown yeah. by the dump. Uh, $2,700 to Land and Assessments, our assessor. Uh, $4,000 to Michael Slavin. That was a cemetery project. We built a road into the back of uh, the cemetery on East Road. Okay. That was in the reserve we put in for us. $39,000 to Benning North Bennington Water Department. It says uh, December through May. That is would be our normal payment for water, I presume. Yes. $39,000. Do the excess normal amount? Yeah. Yeah, we pay them for mm -hmm. for the water we get from them. $6,600 to Tam. Five thousand to William E. Daly. Forty-five hundred to William E. Daly. Any other discussion on check warrant number forty? The, the money we receive for water rent does that go in the general fund or does it go separately and then you transfer the money to the general? Because how how it's coded is it coded to the two sixty fund? Is that? Uh, well, this is the the, the I was talking about the basic uh, revenue for the water. The, the bill of money. Oh, that goes into the reserve account. Okay, and then you transfer it in the reserve account into the general fund and pay it. Is it right? Yeah, it creates a due to your fund. Yes, okay. Yeah, all the revenues come from the water department. We just transfer it, we just write the checks for them. Is that why this is here? Well, all checks are written out of the general fund, so it creates an obligation to put the money back into the general fund from the water account. Okay. So it goes into the water, that's what I was trying to determine. Yeah. It goes yeah. into a sp special water account fund and then it's transferred to the general fund to be yeah, yeah. From a reserve fund to the general fund? Well, the water department is an enterprise fund, so it's, their collection is separate. This is just the bill that we pay out of that fund because we don't own any water. Right. Yeah, the water department has completely separate accounting from the town. Okay. And that's not from our general fund then? Or it is. It it's being the check is being written out of our general fund. Money to pay it came from the water department okay. collections. So it comes it from a reserve fund transferred to a general fund. Okay. Yeah. okay. Any other discussion? All in favor of approval of check warrant number forty say aye. 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 Check warrant number forty in the amount of eighty eight thousand seven hundred and one dollars and fifty five cents is approved five zero zero. Are there any announcements? Uh, I do have one. I got a letter from our fire chief who asked me to read this at tonight's meeting. Dear Selectman, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for the honor that you bestowed on us during Big Truck Night. We as a department don't look for recognition, so when it happens, it is greatly appreciated. Being individually recognized for their years of service was something that most of my firefighters have never experienced. I would also like to thank you for allowing us to use the North Road House for our training over the past couple of months. This was an invaluable experience and allowed us to perform tasks that we just can't do in the classroom. I have found one of the best teaching tools is to not only be hands-on, but to make the learning as much fun as possible. Last but not least, I want to thank David Kiernan and his support for what we do and being a big contributor to the smooth running of the fire department. Very respectfully submitted, Joe Vatican, Chief of Shaftesbury Fire Department. Are there any public comments? Actually, uh, I I just wanted to say something about the, the big, yes, I'm sorry. the big truck night. I was approached by a couple of different people wanting to know why Shaftesbury's town truck wasn't in the the truck night. <laughs> so. Why are our, our we, we, one of our own road trucks weren't there to, to show off, I it guess. It was a miscommunication. Okay, yeah. That's the best way to phrase it. Okay, because I was, I was approached by several... Hey, Normally every year there's, there's one there, yeah. and 
there was just a lot going on and it was missed. Yeah, it, it was meant to be there, it was a mistake. Right, right, yeah. okay. Yeah. I didn't know just how to quite answer it, other yeah. than I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's always one there. There was one picked out and it just didn't. Okay. All right, item seven, treasurer's report. Melanie Dexter, welcome. Hello. Okay, it's one of these mid-month ones that aren't terribly informative, but um, let's see what's interesting here. That insurance payment you see down there, uh, what was that again, Dave? That was, that was uh, a reimbursement for the expenses of fixing the, uh, the tandem that, that fell over for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was covered. So that's what that $7,300 is. Um, the, the big story here is that you can see we're starting to, uh, as we go farther down, we're starting to think about um, needing to get our line of credit. So I'm gonna have that ready uh, for the next meeting, which I think is a special meeting, is that correct? The 29? The 20, that's the 20 that's something. That's what my calendar. Um, anyway, whatever it is, that's, I'm going to have the paperwork ready for the line of credit at that meeting, and you'll need to sign off on that. Um, and so what I'm working on now is just getting the, ca the projected cash flow so that um, that's the main thing I need to supply to the bank to, to be able to, mm -hmm. to get that. The, the other thing is I have, I, I had mentioned at a previous meeting that I needed a new bank account to put um, tax sale money that's in escrow. I don't want to have it commingled with the reserve funds anymore. So um, I have the paperwork for a new um, a new bank account. You need you've been through this a lot of time, but you need to go through the resolutions at this meeting. You have to uh, mm -hmm. ad adopt it, and then um, Tim, you need to sign the paperwork. So I can show, here are the the certified resolutions that you need to adopt. I think you don't have to read the whole thing. I think you've been through this a lot of times. Yeah. And the last page, I just need Tim to sign it, and then I think Marley needs to notarize your yeah. signature. The one I just did had to be notarized, so. I think it needs to be notarized if it's not done uh, in the presence yeah. of a people's representative. So. Yeah. It does need to be notarized. So. Okay. So if you want to, if you want to. Do that tomorrow, or actually Marlene's down there if, if she's still going to be around at the end of the meeting, and then just leave it on my desk. Yeah, I can take that tonight if you stop in tomorrow, because Marlene will be gone before we go up there. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, document. It looks a lot like the document we just signed for the trustees to give them access to the bank account. Uh, <coughs> This is, uh, I'm looking for where it gives the name of the bank account. Um, that's not here. That helps. Its name is Tax Sale Escrow. And it's a money market. Okay, here I have an account number, and if I can see where that account number is connected to that name. name there. Name is there. Yeah. Oh, here's the account number. Right. Which matches the account number here. Yeah, they did the okay. Right. So this is to create tax sale escrow account authorizing Melanie Dexter and Joan Vargo to access it uh, with all the usual legalese that's required for accessing a bank account and without objection we'll forego the reading of that. So move. We have a motion to accept the resolution uh, for creating a, a tax sale escrow bank account from Art. Is there a second? Second from Ken. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So that motion creating a tax sale escrow bank account is approved 500. And I will come in tomorrow and sign this in the presence of the notary. Good. Um, the only other thing I have is I'm going to Castleton tomorrow for a workshop, uh, so I'll be gone all day. But uh, one of the sessions is on preventing and identifying fraud, which I think will be interesting. It's it's led by the by Sullivan Powers, so there'll be some familiar faces. Oh, there. good. Okay. Uh, and then there's also a session on uh, tax sales, which I really don't know anything about. I feel like I should. 
So uh, that's where I will be tomorrow. Very good. Um, that's all I got. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Melanie? I'm fine. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take a, a minute. Just to, the special meeting Melanie referred to was going to be the 29th at 3:30. That's to pay bills uh, because the next scheduled meeting we talk about it is July 3rd, Monday. Um, it's unlikely. I know a mm -hmm. number of us aren't going to be here, uh, so we'll have a special meeting on the 29th at 3:30. Uh, Joan will be here because I'll be on vacation. Joan will be downstairs with a warrant prepared and we can take care of that. Okay. And, and, and your I'll, paperwork. I'll be there too. Present the other the paperwork for the line of credit. Okay. Three thirty special meeting. Okay. It's in my Google Calendar. It can actually happen. Okay. Item eight is road foreman report. Steve, welcome. Evening. So we were just about to get caught up on grading, and then we got a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how uh, how close did we get to getting caught up on the grading? We were till this last go around, probably four or five days ago. We've been we started to make some pretty good progress until what happened again. Mm -hmm. Also made progress with a few of the pieces that we dug. We have succeeded in most of those back, and hopefully they held up with this last one that we had. Uh, and then we started with some of our summertime stuff. Dave and I have a warning about that. I don't know, I couldn't hear that. You asked me something, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. So that you and I had a meeting in the morning that we were like, talking about for summer projects? Yeah, yeah, we were uh, going to have it today, but uh, the weather and trees started coming down. So, uh, yeah, we have a plan for the, for the summer. Uh, it includes a number of projects that will be Shaftesbury Hollow for a second. These are ones we've talked about before, the East Road, about 1,500 feet. Uh, we have like 17 culverts that need to be replaced. Uh, we definitely want to get them on the schedule for the summer. Uh, they will be easier to do on weeks when people are on vacation and we're down to, to four people. Uh, we'll be able to continue doing some grading and put in some culverts. Uh, there's a section of West Mountain Road. And when you're talking about 17 culverts, you're talking about like no, driveway culverts? culverts? Like, like culverts, like 20, somewhere like 22 feet across right. the road. Now these are the, the like two just old steel ones going through the road. They go through the road. Yeah, not the arch culvert like Shaftesbury yeah. Hollow we're talking about. That's right. like more like a bridge on a culvert. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, but there's 17 of these, so we're, we're kind of backed up on them. It's time to catch up. Are they plugged or just just old rusty need to be replaced? It's just time for the, for them to go. We also have a number of French drains that we talked about uh, for Trumbull Hill. Uh, Murphy at Gannon Road, uh, Daniel Road, 200 Daniel Road. Uh, we also have, you can keep going, Horton Hill down by Virix and, and Rollin Road. That section needs to be redone. I'd like to try and do some over on Bupon Hollow, uh, between Bupon and Shaftesbury Hollow. That stretch of road there gets very pitted out. Uh, and of course, we have a transfer station later on, but it's not really an issue because we won't be doing that until October. Uh, the big thing that's come up is the tree, the hazard tree survey. Uh, we have 45 uh, high priority, high probability of failure trees. Uh, I'm gonna work out a contract to go to bid. Um, I have a call into Jim White, who's our warden. Uh, this is something that uh, I think we have to fund and, and get down. This is a certain issue of liability here of, of these trees. And, He's gone around. This is what Steve, half the town you and he did? About three quarters of it. Three quarters, so there'll probably be more in the fall. But uh, there's an opportunity here, as we've had a member of the road crew retire, and to use this, uh, what we were projecting as payroll, to maybe fund this tree removal. Because it's, uh, it's going to be expensive. 45 trees taken down uh, is going to cost money. Uh, we usually use greater heights when we have one or two that have to come down and the crew will go and do the groundwork and chop it up. But when you're talking 45, that's just not going to happen with the other work that needs to be done. Uh, I'm not even sure it'd be within the scope of uh, 
the local guys. We might have to go somewhere else. But I think it's a bid item, and uh, I would imagine I figured a number for it based on prior jobs, but uh, I'll keep that on the What's the average cost of a tree, mm -hmm. depending on size? Well, that's the interesting thing. Yeah. We've had uh, some come down. The last one we took down, the estimate actually we have for one large tree right now is is one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. So you do that by forty five trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I imagine we'll have some economy of scale by going to someone to bid a, such a large contract. But uh, it gets to a point that you you have to do it. And here I'm I figured I'd start this and have one or two things to highlight and then the high priority turned into almost everything oh on God. every page. Yeah. And, uh, Are these all big trees or do they range in size? Some of them are. The, the problem areas were wires and things were height where we, the our department can't do it. Yeah. You just can't reach them to be able to do it. They're just dangerous. Some of them are three feet up at the base. Big old maple trees, for example, is on the end of. Dave, Dave, if you got trees that are involved with wire, have you contacted Greenbelt Power about maybe having a split? Well, I just got this. So there's a, there's a lot we have to look into with this, but it's something we have to plan on doing. Uh, and there's, there's things with the wires and Green Mountain will come around and yeah, like they are doing in a number of towns now and trim things back in the wires and things, but we'd have to see just where, <laughs> if it could be something I think what you're hinting at is, is cooperative with them, like they've taken off a certain amount because it's interfering with their wires, but they won't take it all the way down. I haven't seen them do that anyway. But there's a lot to discuss about this and see how much they will do. Uh, and the diameters of these trees go from 36 inches down to uh, Eight to the fourteen, but most of them the twenty plus range. So you're talking a they decent tree. Trees. You know, they're not they're not little things. A week go knock them down, and uh, you know he's that's why we have him to go look at this stuff and let us know. So, uh, but I, I I know what you're saying, Ken, and there are wires involved. We need to talk to them. We need to find out what's going on with the boat. Something we need to get going. Because yeah, if them trees come down, it's going to do a lot more damage to them than it is us. Yeah, unless it's a uh, car going by. Yeah, I, my neighbor has huge cut leaf maples, which are soft and that sort of stuff. And several years ago, power company came through, said these are coming down. I mean, right, right in your front yeah. yard, put a great big tape around them. Yeah. Nothing's happened, but the, the power company was going to take these huge things down. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a fifty-fifty. Uh, we're, like I said, I want the board to be aware that this is on the table, yeah. and we have to do something about it. Whether or not the power company is going to do it is up in the air. Yeah. I know they've done a lot of work in other towns. Uh, I, I like them. They just took two of you trees down. Yeah, and in some of them they yeah. took down a whole bunch of trees. That was after we had like almost nonstop power outages. But uh, you know, we'll have to see. But it is a, quite a project. It needs to look yeah. Into, okay? yeah. Um, would you say all these trees need to be dealt with this season? Uh, that's what I have a phone call and uh, I missed him a couple of times this week. But uh, They've been looked at over the last six or eight years. There's usually never enough money, so it just keeps... Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's more, 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 more of them. Yeah. And that's the angle I'm really coming at. It comes to the point where kicking that can down the road can't go on any longer. And these have been deteriorating, so... It's either the power company comes and does something, or we might have to do something. Remember, one several years ago, Michael Biddy was a tree warden. And he said there was five hundred dollars in the budget that would take down one tree. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, our budget is is, is a couple of thousand to do things like we have a couple in Howard Park that have to come down. Sure. There's one over the Rod and Gun Club that has to come down. But when you get into this numbers, when I got this list, that's yeah, three of those has ones are McCarthy Acres, big tree, big maple. Okay. Okay. But the rest we have, uh, we're working on, on a schedule because we need to uh, make sure things are moving along. There's flex time built into the schedule. Uh, there is a, a certain amount of money involved here. Uh, just the, for example, yeah, the total budget we have combined for the tree removal is $8,500 from last year and this year. Because I put more in this year thinking we had to cut down some trees. Well, we have to cut down a lot more than I was planning on. Mm -hmm. The culverts, we have more than enough money to replace the 17 culverts. We have a grant that we're going to get to in a few minutes that uh, we just got approved by the state or the state picked us 
to give us $14,000 for culvert and drainage work around town. Uh, I talked to BCRC, that'll cover some, like the ones down on Sally Gannon, or is it Mead in Murphy Hill, uh, to, to fix that. So uh, the map the state has of where drainage need works to be done, uh, that's all marked in purple where it needs to be done, and it's almost the entire town. So 14,000 isn't gonna get us very far, but uh, combined this year, we'll have like $32,000 to work on culverts and uh, drainage issues. And that doesn't include the 20,000 that we have to and another grant to work on the upper end of Shaftesbury Hollow, because we got that separately to work on the drainage up there, because a lot of that is going into the uh, White Creek. Uh, and then we have money for paving, which again, I don't think we're gonna do much this year. Although, uh, the question of aprons kind of intrigued me because there was a very good quote on Quarry Drive. And looking at it, it might be something that, that we should do. And then uh, one thing I was gonna ask Steve to do this afternoon was let's go take a look and get some estimates for like the top of North Road going down. Maybe we should knock off a few of these this year uh, because we don't, have, we don't have a grant to match. And uh, maybe we should tackle some of the little things and just get a little bit ahead. But uh, there's, there's probably a few aprons we could, we could do, because the price uh, does seem pretty good. <coughs> and then the rest is all the drains. Uh, we do come up a little bit short in all the projects we want to do, but I think, uh, I think we'll probably manage it somehow. Have to see how the summer goes. Uh, short on time or short on money? A little short on money. Well, not even a little. Well, thank you. Depends what the weather does. Yeah, we we come up about uh, of all the projects, French drains, uh, gravel on the hollow, Horton uh, Hill, fabric projects on East Road, Myers, West Mountain, Shaftesbury Hollow. Two more projects on Myers comes to about one hundred and thirty-eight thousand dollars, which will leave us about fifty-one thousand dollars short. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see what we can do as we move along with it. And of course, yeah. well, we said we wanted to get this yeah. done before. Yeah. That, you know, we yeah. don't want to. We don't want to leave ourselves in a situation where we're going to be. You know, I think it is like we were this last month season again yeah. in the same spot. Yeah. I think we need to move move it ahead as much as we can. Uh, rather than the money, it's more going to come down to if it ever stops raining because I have to build some flex time into the schedule. And one of the things I was going to discuss with Steve is, is what to kick off the schedule. Uh, to create more flex time because right now we're, we're booked solid uh, and if it rains and rains uh, it's going to turn into a more a question of timing than, than the money because 50,000 we still have money left over from the last winter and this year we're looking at I mean I, I figure we'll be about 25,000 under the budget right now but that's going to be gone because one of the things Steve's going to do I know in the next week or two is finish the end of Eric Road which uh, is desperately short of material, and that's going to eat up probably what half of that, Steve. Yeah. So by the time we do one more little project, you know that'll be gone. So uh, it's just out there. It's number of working schedule, uh, but again, given the weather this year, uh, we will get as much of it as done as we can. But as long as it's scheduled and you know where you can flex out to other things, uh, we can keep up. I don't really see it as a challenge in doing any of the work we have planned if it doesn't rain every day. You know, because rain leads to more problems too. So. Okay, well keep us posted because we want to make sure we get as much of this as we can yeah. done and you know if we, like we said, the, what happened to us in February was something like an emergency and sometimes, you know, we have emergency funds for just that yeah. reason. So yeah. if, it, if it takes that, uh, let's get it done. Yeah. I think if, if, like I said, if we can maintain the schedule when we get into September and uh, we haven't been backed off by too many storms, then we can finish every one of these and then move on to the winter prep, uh, the more ditching and, and the transfer station. I think we're, we're in fairly good shape. Uh, along those lines also, because uh, we did have a retirement, uh, Tim Green retired after 35 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I discussed with some members of the board separately that we were not running out to hire a replacement right away. We want to evaluate 
down the road, I had always envisioned uh, when an opening came up that we might stay at five and contract out parts of both of the projects. Uh, I think we want to take some time to look at that. And I'm going to put out a bid soon to see about the uh, winter plowing route. If someone wants to plow for the winter. Instead of hiring someone part-time to just come use one of our trucks, use one of your trucks and be in the village, paved roads, which you can actually do with a one-ton pickup. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, with the projects we have uh, and the manpower allocations, we can do everything we plan to do with what we have now. Uh, I was thinking of maybe using some of this to contract out some of the work, but until we resolve the trees, I think we might want to hold on that. Because the trees, uh, right, look, if the power company does it, it'd be great. If they don't, or if we have to split it or something, uh, we could use that as a healthy reserve. Because again, like Steve said, this is not the first year, this is the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. My, my question with the trees is that if we have somebody cut them down, if we hire somebody to cut them down, um, are we still liable for anything that happens to the wires? Oh, no, that all has to be done with the power company. The power company has to Well, that's, all that's what I'm trying to get at. And, and if, they the, have, if the power company says, no, we're fine with those trees, well, right, that's, but yet we want them gone. That's what we'll have to see because there's a certain level of, they Liability. may not want to spend the money, but uh, I don't know. I, I've never known the power company say we think yeah. I mean, we could not cut down the tree. Yeah, I can't see that either. Right. No. They would be more than happy if someone would help them get rid of these things. Uh, the question yeah, I think they'd like every tree anywhere well, near a power well, I think, I, well, I think what my question is, is, is something happened bad while cutting the tree down? That's, that's the responsibility of the person cutting them down. Yeah. Cutting the tree, okay. Nothing yeah. to do with us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you get into, like I said, it, it would be something that was bid out. You know, uh, as, was it Ask Plum, or however you pronounce that, and uh, a couple of the other companies, the big companies that work with power companies all the time. Okay. The um, I don't know where this is going to shake out, but it's on the board should be aware of that. But we would be taken out of the equation as far Absolutely. as it's Oh, yeah, we have no liability. Responsibility. To if we contract with someone, they have their insurance, they have right. a responsibility, and if they knock down the power lines, they have to pay to put them up. Okay, good. Now our guys do do a bit of tree work on smaller stuff, and then which yes. case we would be responsible. But we don't cut down trees around power lines. We're we're taking out you know no. stuff that I can probably do with my chainsaw. <laughs> no, and anything large, greater heights comes and and, and takes care of everything uh, high up. We don't do any tall trees. Nobody's qualified to do that. Right. And greater heights, then again, of course, is bringing their insurance and everything else to it. Because until it's on the ground, it's still their responsibility. Uh, what's the plan, Dave, as far as uh, if you're going to have a priority with the fabric jobs and the French drains? Or, cause I think those two, are gonna, we're going to get more value out of that as far as the spring next year if we can concentrate on them as much as we can. Well, it turns into a mixed bag because as you go through the summer, you have vacations and you have uh, a max work period of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because we have uh, water department responsibilities and parks responsibilities. So what we do is we have more or less big power weeks where we do large jobs like uh, the 700 feet in Shaftesbury Hollow, 1500 on uh, East Road, but then that will be followed by uh, potentially a French drain week, and this is if we, how we finish this off. And then culverts because someone else is on vacation, but then we go back to three straight weeks of fabric projects because right. everyone will be here. You know, and then you get into, did we lose a few days because of rain? So it will, it'll be a mixed bag of projects moving from one to the other week by week, vacation week by vacation week, and uh, then adjusted on the fly, we're using flex time for rain. Right. If it rains on Monday and Tuesday, uh, we need to move that project into the following week and kick everything back a week because on Thursday we have water department and on Thursday and Friday we have uh, parks. Yeah, no, I mean, I understand all that, but what yeah. I'm saying is I think we're going to get more benefit as far as down the road next year for, for the spring mud season. And we'll get more out of the fabric and the drain print trades as far as Mm -hmm. Future benefit. 
Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, I don't see any problem in doing the, the East Road project, or uh, uh, at least one of the three Myers segments, the Shaftesbury Hollow segment. I really don't see those as an issue. Uh, Vir uh, Horton Hill by Virix, because uh, that's a short, easy thing. Uh, I, I, every, every one can be done. It's, it's, yeah, it's not money, it's, it's weather. Oh, yeah. I don't. yeah, yeah, you still, you know, and that even is going to affect this, you know, you can't replace a culvert in the middle of a rainstorm. No. So, you know. can't replace them at all sometimes. The state says you can't. There's a pond there. We're working on the pond. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a drought anytime soon, the pond level will go down. We'll be set. Because right lots of beavers moves over there at 2 a.m. Yeah. But um, Steve and I, and, and uh, Ron are going to meet and try and finalize this out tomorrow so that uh, we can pick up and keep going. I think if we stick to the plan as best we can, then if people know what they're expected to do the Monday they come in and uh, fire up the trucks and get going and let's get it done. And I think Steve was talking about 500 foot sections a day, so uh, I think that's a reasonable amount. Uh, we, there will be truck rentals with this too. But we've already figured this into the, the budget for it. Because the key thing is to keep the greater, the guys on site moving the whole time. And for the most part, uh, especially Myers, which is right up the road from the pit, and East Road isn't that bad. But going out to the hollow, that takes a little bit more effort. Because uh, we want to get it from over here at Daly's. And so that's a little bit more trucking expense. But I think it'll work out. Had, had you asked, uh Green Mountain Power, like you say, they've got crews that go around and just take trees down for them. Mm -hmm. If their trees happen to coincide with ours, maybe we could say, well, you take them down and we'll pay you for half of it? You know, like I said, this is, I'm just letting the board know tonight because I just was looking at this last week and was kind of, I got out my yellow highlight. I was just going to highlight yeah. the high priority ones and it turned out, yeah, I should have highlighted the good ones. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, it was such a large number, I wanted the board to know that, you know, we, there is a flex in, in our budget this year because of, of the retirement, yeah. and this might be the thing that has to fill it. But everything's on the table with Green Mountain, how they work, maybe a lot of these, maybe they have a crew that's supposed to start here mid-July. It's anything's yeah, possible, so. Because when I went for the time, we did that, and it worked out really good for everybody. Well, the, there's, there's limits, and that does work out if someone's doing the tree work and we're doing the groundwork, but we have a very full schedule. If I can put it off to the end of September, beginning of October, we, we can put people with them. And I, you know, that's... Uh, right, oh, I understand, but it's just another way to save money for you to do it. Oh, absolutely. That's why we use Greater Heights all the time when we have one or two trees. Yeah. Because he does the high work. And, and the crew chips it up and everything. So. All right. Um, Is that it for the roads? No, our mm -hmm. sign post at the end of Madison Road on Horton Hill is just tipped over. It's still got the concrete block on it and everything. So just dig a hole and set Seven, it back up. Seven. Okay. Oh, and um, East Road in Buck Hill, it's turned the wrong way. So yeah. those of us that know. Again? Really? Did you fix it? I thought we did fix that. Already. Yeah, it's okay. still showing. Uh, it's rotated 90 degrees, so that if you actually didn't know which road was which, you would you would guess wrong from the way the sign is situated. So look at that. Too. We can rotate that. That would be. Good. And the stop sign at the end of Hidden Valley is bent over too. You can see it, but you really yeah. pull it back. Okay. Oh, and when is the state going to fix our signs that they promised to fix us over on? Uh, White Creek and such. Uh, we try, we signed just, something that said try, they just wanted permission to oh, yes. upgrade the signs for speed, us. Speed limit. The yeah, signs right. were wrong size and yeah. they were yeah. all illegal. And yeah, because that was all, all free. that was all part of that agreement back when it was getting yeah. paid. So I haven't said right. anything about yeah. the speed limit sign on Bank Street that's laying on its side because I'm waiting for the state <laughs> to fix it. So yeah, yeah. that's worth yeah. Uh, checking Cold, into. Cold Spring Road and Coulter's the signs missing there too. That's bad. Check this. Yes. 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 Yes.
I'd forgotten about that. And then that, that agreement's several years old. Okay. What did you hear on the truck day? Uh, nothing. You didn't get any update today, right? No. Uh, what the bill paid for was going over to Delores, getting uh, a variety of ailments fixed. It's down at, what is the name of that place, Steve? It's uh, Kaiser. Kaiser's. Kaiser's. Yeah. And they're just going to check it out and make sure that uh, it, it's all in line. Uh, insurance did pay for everything that was done at Delores. That was the in revenue. <coughs> right. Uh, so the damage wasn't terrific. Well, 7000 is isn't cheap, but it wasn't. Terrific. I mean, basically, it literally fell over. So, uh, hopefully, that way. They're going to check. They're, they're doing the frame there. And was yeah. there still a question on the piston? Yeah, I believe that's a lot of what's holding the top a little bit. It's in there. The big piston's bent, and so is the mountain. It looks like the frame. <coughs> and once they get all that loose and set the body down, it should, it should yeah. come back. Going down this wax, is it? I believe so. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We're ready to move on? All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. <coughs> uh, item 9, BRS update. Tony. Tony and I met with uh, Forrest Wayan at Bennington County of Bennington Rescue Squad this week. Oh. <laughs> Forrest I'll let you fill us in on that. Great. Forrest would like to come in. I think he said June, maybe July, to talk to us about the rescue squad and what they do. Um, I think between Tim and me, we learned a lot from Forrest and I had an orientation before that. Um, what he'd like to know is what kind of stats, what kind of information do you need to make, uh, to help you with decisions about funding in the future. I mean, there are a lot of things that I wasn't aware of, or Tim was, um, like uh, what they get paid for, what they don't get paid for, the number of uh, people they revive and transport by town. Um, he's got all of those stats. So I'm wondering if there's anything in particular you'd like to know. One of the things that was discussed was um, that involves stats was you know what kind of stats in terms of how often does Benning does Bennington Rescue Squad service Shaftesbury relative to Arlington Rescue Squad, which we also contribute to, uh, and that would be good to know. That would maybe help us evaluate this. Uh, one of the things that we learned that I didn't know is that uh, we can uh, we can specify we can choose, but when we and tell 911 service that we would rather. Uh, you know, one or the other be the first call. And right now I think they have it divided up geographically. Uh, but, you know, it's worth looking into because, you know, if we end up paying, you know, a lot more for Bennington Rescue Squad and it, you know, we look at the stats and see that, you know, even though Arlington's closer, they're volunteer, uh, it might be the case that Bennington Rescue can service people all over Shaftesbury faster than, than Arlington can. So. Uh, Things like that are things that we want to evaluate. They're also the only rescue squad in the area that can uh, deliver um, emergency advanced care uh, that the other squads cannot. Uh, so oftentimes they will be called, first of all, say Arlington would be called, but then Arlington realizes that this patient really needs advanced care then Bennington would be called to come in and do it. And they just won an award, national award, for the number of lives saved. They can, because, because of their training, they can determine if they go right from the site right. to Albany rather than stopping at Bennington. Tony, all their people? I'm Is sorry? he saying all their people can do that? Or just their paramedics? Well, it's, there's, there's different levels. They have yeah. very few regular EMTs. Most mm -hmm. of them are advanced EMTs. Yeah, that's what Arlington staffs those with, and they're paid during the day. Okay, but then at night, it's the Bennington Rescue Squad, evidently, that, that, that does their, uh, gets called, I think. Yeah, I'm just, I uh, yeah, I'm just curious, because they're, yeah. they're just talking about EMT A's down there. They, they don't have any other classification, right? No, there's, there's, it, there there's are, tiers, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah tiers, it everywhere yeah. has them, yeah. 
I, I'm more interested. I, one of the things I would like to see is how Bennington compares with other places such as Rutland. I mean, it just seems though they have a lot bigger, uh, more vehicles and that sort of stuff compared to Rutland or something. But there may be other services in Rutland that's that mm -hmm. we don't have in Bennington and anything. It's just. I think one of the questions is again with equipment is. And then being paid and not being paid for certain things is all boils down to the transport. Transport, right? yeah. And you, the services in, in most other places, I'm not familiar with, with the actual rules in Vermont, but they have different levels of transport vehicles right down to basically a van. Yeah. And you can't okay. take a paramedic unit and be reimbursed when the person only needs a van. So it's a choice of equipment or a lack of competitiveness around here because they're the only business in town. So uh, I think that has to be a question on how many of these calls are, are transports and what level of transport are they? Uh, because many units can transport. If you're taking someone back to one of the nursing homes or assisted right. living places, uh, that rarely requires an EMTAE unit and it's not, they're not gonna be paid for one if that's what they happen to have there. Uh, if you go to Pittsfield, I forget the name of the service that provides them, they, they have transport vans and different levels. Uh, I know that's harder in, as you get more rural, but uh, just just a question. I mean, what percentage of calls are transports, non-emergency transports, and what percentage are, are emergencies? Okay. Do they charge the same for just a transport or a regular medical problem? Well, it's a question of what you're gonna be paid back for. Right. Because you're submitting this to, to Medicare and Medicaid uh, for most cases, and even your private insurance carriers won't. If you roll out, you know, what we would have called a paramedic unit to pick someone up at the hospital and take them back to the nursing home, they're not paying for a paramedic unit. <laughs> you know, it's not going to happen. So I know there's the fee structures and, and the types of units available that, you know, some questions could be asked. I was going to say, I've often heard of people that you know, don't drive, but yet they need to, to go to a, you know, to the hospital. So instead of calling a taxi, they'll just call the, the rescue squad. Yeah. But that's the bane that's, of all emergency yeah. services is, and no matter if you have an ambulance, more. you're going to get that call. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just part of it. You know? yeah. That happens everywhere, big, small, middle. Right, right. But, yeah. but to that point, do you need a full-fledged huge thing that has a life support system and all that sort of stuff in it to do that. But I guess you don't know when you get the call, is that the problem? Yeah, yeah. My experience with those is you take take the unit out there on a call, woman requesting this, she's having chest pains, and you open the door and she's packed and ready for her admission. Because, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's kind of like you can't, you know, you can't get judge. there, so, you know, she's going in and you do it, so mm -hmm. that's, yeah. One of the difficulties of it, but okay. well, yeah, pretty much have to operate under the assumption it is a real emergency. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll ask. Yeah. So I guess one of the situations where you might use a less equipped truck would be if somebody is just going from the hospital back to mm -hmm. skilled nursing. Yeah. Uh, and then that can be a very expensive problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, and we're continuing to have more meetings with uh, the Rescue Squad as we, you know, look at this funding situation. Uh -huh. We have another meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Any other questions on on that one? Okay, item 10, TAM host town agreement renewal. Uh, we had dis voted last week to uh, discontinue the host town tax on TAM that we don't impose on any other carriers in town. Uh, Dave, you brought up an issue about um, tonnage. Can you explain that to yes, us? Yes, back in 2012, 
a, the DRB approved an application to increase the tonnage at TAMS facility to 30,000 tons. Uh, there's, the permits are in place that he needs to do this. Uh, the line directly out of the decision says, at this time, TAM has a host town agreement with the town of Shaftesbury, which currently limits the tonnage to 20,000 tons per year. Therefore, this decision shall limit the site to 20,000 tons until this agreement is altered. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. Uh, at any time when the host town agreement is increased above 20,000 tons, the facility may increase tonnage to the limits of the host town agreement. However, the facility may not increase above 30,000 tons under this decision. So in March of 2012, the DRB approved the increase to 30,000 tons. The permits are in place. This is the first time this has been renegotiated since then. So uh, the difference was, and, and it wasn't brought up at the last meeting, that it would be time to change the 20,000 to 30,000 tons. The DRB and has the whole finding of facts which is sent around to everybody in the decision. Um, there's no reason to think that anything's changed in the last 12 years, except they've proved they're not really doing anything to the roads over there. And this requires, according to the decision, no change to the facility at all. So, you would tell me you would like a, uh, like a motion to amend the uh, vote that we had last meeting to include 30,000 tons rather than 20, which well, was, which was we probably on the, which was probably part of the document that we approved. Is that right? It is. It is in number 15, mandatory renegotiation. Uh, Tam and Shaftesbury will renegotiate changes in the fee structure and other aspects of this agreement. Anytime there is an increase above it says 20,000, that should now be 30,000. Right. Is there uh, any urgency on uh, approving this document tonight? I'm kind of inclined to do what Art suggests and make a motion to increase the tonnage to 30,000 and then approve it at our next meeting to see if we get any feedback about that. I don't know what feedback there is that the DRB approved it. Point is well taken. It's gone it's gone through the public the mm -hmm. public process. The public hearing process. Yeah, I guess it was approved. It just needed uh, just the paperwork change yeah. to uh, yeah. to change it. Okay. I was just gonna say so what happens if, if it doesn't get approved? No, the, the DRB approved. They asked to do this back in 2012, and the DRB approved, approved but it, they okay. wouldn't let it go through until we renegotiated the host town well, agreement. We did last year, yeah. Yeah, and because it's a five-year agreement, it's just coming up now. So it has been vetted been publicly, granted five years ago, but. Well, it was, a, the, the DRB approved potentially going up to 30,000 tons, right? And at the time, the the Toast Town Agreement set it at 20,000 tons. Yes. And so now we're given the option of going to 30,000 tons. I think Dave read that in between the time that the DRB approved it and when we approved it, if it ever did go above 20, that's okay as long as it doesn't go above 30. So they have been given approval to go all the way to 30 until which time it's renegotiated. Um, yeah, I'm just, my, my main thought is there was a lot of acrimony about this back in the day. Uh, we removed the tax last time. Uh, have not heard anything, I have not heard anything from anyone about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the DRB did approve uh, a limit of 30,000 tons from a uh, bylaws point of view. It's still the purview of the select board to approve it from a political point of view, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, but if we're agreed, then I think uh, that we can go to 30,000 tons, then uh, all that remains to be done is approve this new host town agreement. 
Is there a motion? I would make a motion that we approve it for thirty thousand dollars. There is a motion to approve the new host town agreement with TAM that includes removal of the host town tax and an increase in uh, operating capacity to thirty thousand tons. Second. Seconded by Art. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So that motion approving a new host town agreement with TAM, removing the host town tax on TAM, and increasing operating tonnage to 30,000 tons is approved by a vote <coughs> of 500. Just need more to sign that, and then I'll have Trevor sign it for TAM. While that's going on, do you want me to start the insurance? Do we have a choice? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, sure. the insurance contracts are up again for the TAM. Uh, this year we're not going to go out for bid. I think next year we will go through the whole process of uh, that was done, I think, three years ago of having, well, last time only BLCT came in, their bid was much higher. Uh, this year the insurance for the town will be up slightly $2,000, which is $853 uh, higher than what I estimated in total. It went from 50,000 to 52,835. I estimated it would go to 52,000. So uh, it's only $835 above what we've already budgeted. Um, just a reminder, we've been with uh, uh, Wills for some 40 plus years. Uh, frankly, my experience with it has always been excellent, including our latest uh, event using them. And uh, the service is good. The carriers provide prompt quick response to all our phone calls and the, the cost has not really moved at all in the last few years and uh, it hasn't even gotten to the point where the last competitor VLCT had their initial bid three years ago so I think we're in, in fairly good shape with staying with them. Um, Dave Newell will be here uh, he couldn't make it tonight uh, he can't be here for the next meeting either but we'll be here uh, the second meeting in July, I'm sorry, the first meeting in August, just go over the unemployment aspects of it, what our current uh, uh, rates are regarding that. But uh, it, it'd be news, and I think it's just an acceptable deal. We, we basically do this every year. But uh, I think I spoke to Tim, I think next year we go through the whole putting it out. We, we have many of these with VLCT that just renew annually, and, and this one, like I said the service is good. Decades of experience with the company. So Yeah, the only other competitor is the LCT really. We looked at them what three years ago? Yeah, three years ago and it was quite a bit higher than this. It was. It's I frankly say almost higher a third than, higher. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Was. yeah. Yeah. It's actually higher than what we're paying now three years well, later. So when's our when is our when's our uh, does it renew? It renews in, in July. July. It, it, different aspects we knew at different times, but uh, okay. we need a motion to. Uh, you have the board to uh, make a motion to approve it. I make that motion that uh, we renew uh, our policy with Wills for, for one more year. For one more year, correct. We have a motion from Art to renew our insurance policy with Wills for one more year. Second. Second by Tony. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That motion to renew insurance with Wills is approved by a vote of 500. Yeah, because we're we're only planning a uh, an emergency or a special meeting to sign warrants between now and the first of July, so it's appropriate to go ahead and do it. All right, I mentioned a little earlier, we were asked to participate in the Municipal Roads Grants in Aid pilot project. This has to do with uh, the Municipal Roads General Permit, which has to do with water runoff and, and uh, waterways. Uh, we've been chosen and awarded a grant of $14,100, which we have a cash or in-kind match of 2820. This is the base amount the state will give us. If some of the other towns listed on here aren't interested, we'll get more. It was like 2.1 million around the state. 
So uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I've already talked to Jim down at BCRC on projects we had lined up anyway that now can be funded by this. Uh, so it just needs the board's approval and a signature and uh, it basically supplements the culvert work I was talking about earlier, culverts in the French brain. So 17 yeah. culverts? Uh, well, yeah, this, this won't cover, cover all those, but uh, uh, it'll give us a lot of flexibility to, to do a number of projects. So the state's awarding us with 14,000? 14,100 14, at minimum. Okay. It, it may actually be more. more. You know, as the, your money is allocated around the state, I guess if towns, for whatever reason, because everyone has to abide by this municipal roads general permit. It's all part of this Clean Water Act. Yeah, it's all it's part of the Clean Water Act. It's going to cost us big It's going to cost us. As I said, you know, the 14000 is great, but when I pulled up the map talking to, to Jim, they marked the areas in purple. Well, like the entire <laughs> town's in purple. I'm like, oh, you know, Jim, this will do like 50 feet. <laughs> what, are we, what are we going to do? But uh, it's a start. Yep. And we've got, what, 32 in the bank to put towards it? Uh, no, that'll be 32 total, including so, Including the 14,000, yeah, okay, so 22, this. yeah. Yeah, so there's, uh, it's going to be interesting because it is all part of that act. Uh, it, it's a state mandate that's very difficult for a town like ours that has 70 miles of roadways okay. and a few streams and rivers in it. And uh, how you get this all together to meet this is yet to be seen. And we're not the only people in this yeah. boat here. Do, do we get involved many special rules, regulations, or extra strings on there because we go for this? Well, yeah, well, that's kind of the point of this, is the state is going to mandate that we do things a certain way, that's right. and we're signing on early to say we're going to do things a certain way, yeah. uh, relative mostly to, to clean water, as you say. Uh, I mean, at a minimum, the ditch got to be seated now and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, settling pools. So I think cool, rather than going whole, directly into yeah. the stream. There's a whole list of things that, even the 20,000 that I got from, from uh, back roads, or better roads they call it, for the upper part of Shaftesbury Hollow, you oh, know, I had to have an engineer come and design, now I have to have an engineer come to make sure we, it's it's a lot of stuff, but. E even if you didn't take the 14,000, you'd still be mandated. You're still gonna to do, have to do it anyway. To do all okay, well, I yeah. Yeah. We do, we do have bad. to, yeah. But, like well, we might, we might save a year of not having to do it this yeah. way, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the whole town has to be done by the best management practices, and if you just have to do it. It's, well, this well, is I mean, a drop You want to do that anyway, Dave. I'm just yeah. saying, everyone gets into something where, well, you know, you do it now, and we'll pay you, but then for the next ten years, you're going to do it. Or we're not going to pay you for it. Well, that's already done because the Clean the Clean Water Act says we have to do it anyway. Okay. Well, so just, we, we have to do it whether we get money or not. I don't so. like these little strings in the background. Uh, this is a pretty straight rope. This. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, and that just needs to be signed by the board if uh, they approve it. And okay. I need a motion to um, sign the letter of intent to participate in the. Municipal Roads Grants and Aid Pilot Project. So moved. Moved by Ken. Second. Seconded by Art. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That motion is approved 500. Zero, zero. To parking restrictions on Buck Hill Road at Route 7. Okay, in a meeting with the State Traffic Committee last week, uh, parking restrictions were approved on Route 7A. They'll extend south from the intersection of Buck Hill 135 feet to the first driveway, and they'll extend north. Uh, these are both on the east side. Extend north, <coughs> excuse me, north 50 feet, which is the, uh, the approximate area of the telephone pole on the northeast corner. Uh, the state will do all the markings uh, as they get to it. Uh, 
but all the property owners on the corner were notified of this hearing. People were given the opportunity to uh, participate online or to go to Montpelier. Um, we had no one take us up on that. So the conference call took place and um, it was approved. This is actually had been recommended by the state as far back as 2012 that uh, this, we should vigorously pursue sight line issues here. So it was the thought, I believe, that the sidewalk project and all that would help take care of it, but it, it didn't. It, it's, the sight line is terrible coming out of here, which yeah. that's all I heard. I received no responses from the letter sent out. It was put uh, on the front page of the web page. Uh, we received no comments, neither did the state or request for changes. It will really have no effect other than the parking right in front of the apartment building across the street that uh, the town does lease at a very nominal cost parking area for all those tenants off Buck Hill Road. So there's virtually no effect to, to anyone, uh, except maybe a little shorter walk. But that's <laughs> not here today. Mm -hmm. They'll make the school crossing much safer. Yeah. I don't think any of us have ever come out of this corner without having not seen a car coming up. So yeah. it'll make it happy for everyone. Uh, the next item on the agenda, oh, I'm sorry, we put them at that. Yeah, we wanted to mention the, the sidewalk, sidewalk scoping grant oh, that we, right, we right. Uh, talked about. Yeah, well, I looked uh, deeper into the pedestrian and bicycle grant to do a scoping study for the corner to see where we should extend the sidewalk. Uh, it's a 50% match at the scoping study range, which could be for us ten to $15,000, which I just didn't think was uh, the thing to do at this point. So I think we should wait a little bit and have a better idea, maybe generate some public discussion on what we want to go this way so we can cut back at least on the scoping study down the road a little bit. But we've just finished one long, expensive project. Uh, I, when I first looked at it, I didn't realize that the scoping study would be that expensive, and we had to pay 50% of it. Mm -hmm. uh, usually these, by 10 to 20, 50 just makes it just that much more. So we'll settle in with Pawnee here, we'll see how the parking restrictions do, and we can pick this up next year in, in it if uh, it seems viable. What is the standard fee for a scoping study? No, it all depends. Oh, it's all engineers. It depends on the project. You know, uh, but there's minimums to it, and the minimum is usually around 20, is what they were saying. Okay. So we're looking at, at our responsibility of $10,000 to look into this at this point. And, uh, there's other things on the table right now. But we can get back to it. And like I said, we just finished a very long sidewalk project, so. Yeah, when we approved that, I think we were all thinking, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, yeah. about yeah. ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Uh, I know that's our what match, I was so, uh, At the time, you know, a thousand or two, why not? But at ten or fifteen thousand, okay. uh, it turns into a lot of money. No, it's, what, it's a harder call. So what does that buy you? It gives you an idea. It gives that's you all. A, a plan. That's yeah. all. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. No, yeah. 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 The sidewalk yeah. 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 Then you have to hire the engineers to actually design the whole thing. So, so, so the, the spending's not done yet. Oh yeah. God, so no. You hire the engineers, and then, yeah. then you go into yeah. put the plan into action. Yeah. So the other approach is to. Uh, when the appropriate time comes to start talking it up and getting some of the uh, stakeholders involved and what would you actually like to see like across the street across probably the country street. store these people on the corner what streetscape. do you really want to see here yeah and the streetscape thing that, that has been talked about what do you really want to see here and sure. uh, then we can go for, for the grant later on and actually with the streetscape we might even be able to, to shave off the whole uh, Scoping study. So that might even be part of it. But it just seemed like too much right now to get involved in that. Just wondering how necessary it is to have a scoping study. I mean, if it's federal money, it's, it's on a state highway. Oh, okay. I mean, we could yeah. probably, you know, pick up the phone and build, you know, build a sidewalk for thirty thousand yeah. dollars, <laughs> yeah, right. and then apologize for not doing the paperwork. But I, I don't think that's the way yeah. we have to do it. Right. Did we just trade down on those lights over here, Dave? Uh, actually, uh, Eric, I didn't get back to me today. Uh, the day was Friday. It was they were supposed to be done, and uh, I haven't heard yet back yet whether or not it was done. Uh, so we're going to have to wait till the wee hours because it's going to be late tonight and tomorrow night till like 9:30. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, I think he's doing that on purpose. But uh, <laughs> someone, someone's going to have to come out 
Take the dog for a walk at midnight tonight and see, see if it's, if it's any of the dark around here. Um, but that would be it. Uh, you know, I have the state on them too because um, the grant's done, the paperwork's approved, our money's approved, and it's all sitting on a desktop in Montpelier because we can't sign the paper accepting the project because the lights aren't done. So as soon as these lights are done, sure. then we'll just sign the paper, we approve, and you know we'll get all our money back. Right now, the last payment is just sitting up there, and uh, they told me that Hathaway was going to do it on Friday. Okay. So, let's see. But it's all agreed. They're going to put in the dimmers and yeah, they're doing the whole thing. So just like we wanted, they just yeah. hadn't gotten yeah done. Yet. Yeah, it's just. Uh, I don't know what their delay is, but mm -hmm. in Hathaway, all they need is the parts, and they'll go do it. Mm -hmm. So I think Casper's a little reluctant to get involved, but uh, who would have preferred not to have to pay? Him? <coughs> but their error, so I can't help them. Okay. Uh, item 14, road name change. Okay. At the request of the state 911 board. Town, li town Line Road West. They want to change the Town Line Road. Uh, they're seeing that there is no east anymore because it was where Route 7 went through the middle of it. Right. So actually the people in Bankton who live on Town Line Road West, as we call it, call it Town Line Road. So it's coming up two different roads and the state wants West done away with. Uh, Shelley contacted all the property owners by mail uh, back on June 7th, and then we haven't heard from anybody. And those we have heard call Town Line Road anyway. So, so beyond the, beyond the, the new road, what, it, what is that road called? That is called, uh, I knew that was going to go right out of my head. It runs with one of the builders. Okay, but it, it's not Town Line Road. It's not Town Line Road at all, no. Okay. Uh, boy, I'm sorry, that went right out of my head. But uh, before the road went through, that it was all town line. It was town line, line east and town line west. Now there's well, that's no right, east. because some of it came in from Bennington. Yeah, yeah. and now okay. there's no there's no east, and the west is becoming confusing because town line road is used in Bennington. So they just want right. for the bank and addresses on it. So they just want to unify it. Okay. And no one on the street objects, and and actually this is kind of a mandate from 911. But I put the brakes on because only the board can change a road name. So I need the board to make a motion to change the road name from Town Line West to Town Town Line Road West to Town Line Road, road. and then uh, it, it'll be approved because only the board has a statutory authority to change road names. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. Tony has moved that we change the name of Town Line Road West to Town Line Road. Second. Seconded by Ken. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So, by a vote of 500, Town Line Road West will become Town Line Road. Okay, the next thing... We don't have to sign anything? No. Okay. No. Uh, we can do it by, by, by motion to get it going. There might be a paperwork afterwards, but... Uh, next thing on the agenda was tax sales. For, the scheduled for July 11th. Uh, I'm only going to address the tax sales for water. We have three. Uh, one, there's, there's activity on, so I don't know if we're going to have three. We might only have two. Uh, just want to remind the board that these are taking place. Uh, we will need someone from the board to be at the sale on the 11th. That's for taxes and, and for water. That's uh, July 11th? July 11th, which is Tuesday. Do you have a time on that? Because uh, I've, I've done those before. Hmm. 10 a.m. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, this is a different thing. So sorry, make that the 17th. The sales on on the 17th. They have to the 11th to take action. Okay. You still think it's at 10 a.m.? Yes. And that's here, right? 
That's where they have yep. been in the past, yeah. Of the two possible ones, is are they both tax and water? Uh, they're all tax. Uh, two are tax. No. All three are tax and water. Tax and water. And water, okay. yes. We haven't done anybody with just water yet. No. We thought we were, but it turned out uh, to be otherwise. Okay. And just a reminder, those thing, those properties go to tax sale to pay the delinquent taxes. Um, usually someone will show up to buy the properties. If no one does, uh, I, as the select board, representing the select board, will uh, make a bid on the property uh, equal to the amount of uh, delinquent taxes. And then uh, if nothing else happens in the ensuing year of waiting one year, one year. yeah then then we end up with that property that we can then sell for uh for our delinquent taxes that's all we're allowed to sell it for um usually what happens is after that happens uh during that waiting period the owner finds the money to pay the taxes and uh it gets taken care of uh and what even more usual than that is that somebody will uh buy the property at tax sale Often, not necessarily to own the property, but just to earn the interest that they get by uh, by putting their money in wait for a year, because it's uh, it's like twelve percent interest that they get for doing that, which is good by today's standards. Yeah, yeah. leaps and bounds ahead of the bank. Yeah, because we're getting what point twelve percent on our money right now. So, so yeah, those are good good rates. Mm -hmm. Okay, but July eleventh. <laughs> July 17th, 11th, make it 11th. Sorry, I just that one. It was the 11th? Yeah, it is the 11th. It is the 11th. Okay. So I knew it was the day after I got back. July 11th, 10 a.m. Cold Hall. Okay. Okay, anything else on tax sales? No, that's, uh, that's all I have. All right, dog licenses and ordinance violations. Okay, uh, as of the 13th, we have 90 people who have one or more unlicensed dogs, uh, which is, is quite a lot. Uh, we are in the process of ramping up to start issuing summonses uh, right now. It still remains a $10 fine, uh, plus the cost of registering your dog. Uh, that's going to look relatively cheap in a few weeks. Uh, after the constables come to your home and leave notice, you'll have two weeks to pay the uh, violation, which is $35, plus the cost of registering your dog. Uh, if a summons is issued, after the, that two weeks, there's going to be court costs involved in it, and the fines are going to go up considerably. They can go up to $150. Uh, I'm just bringing this up, and we talk about this in quite often. Please register your dog. There are 90 people on this list who haven't registered their dogs yet. This is a state law. It has to be done, and we're responsible to find out who has rabies shots and who doesn't. So this is kind of been off to the side a little bit. Uh, but we have forms, I have new people signed up, we're back in the Judicial Bureau, and uh, I have 200 summonses downstairs, and I have people to write them. And um, we would just like you really just to register your dog. It's the late fee now plus the normal registration fee. It's going to hit $35 plus the normal registration fee. Then it's going to go higher if we actually issue a summons, because then the Judicial Bureau is going to want a fee for the paperwork having been served. Uh, and if you go to court, then you have to pay the town's court attorney if you're found guilty. So please come down and take care of your dogs now while it's $10 fine. Because after the constables go out, it's, it's going to go up right away. And the waiver fine, if people are thinking of that, is not going to be that much less. So uh, again, if you have a dog that was ever licensed here and you haven't renewed the license, please come do it now before the constables are at your door. and. 
the fines go up quite a lot. And the people on that list have already received multiple notices, correct? Oh yeah, they get the, the first notice way back from the clerk, then the late notice from the clerk. Um, they, they're well informed that we, we miss them. Right. And uh, many of them, I think probably their, their dog, they don't have the dog anymore. Uh, but we still need to know that. And be not responding is going to wind up with a violation in the summons. And if the summons is issued, you still have to come and, and deny it. So please just contact the town clerk. Come down and register your dog for the $10 fine now. I know the board has waived these fines before to encourage people to come in. We reduce the fees. And we still have 90 people who haven't registered their dogs. It's probably close to 140 dogs, too. So it's... Don't want to have to bring out this part of it, but you know, yep. we have mm -hmm. to come take care of this. Yep. And again, uh, we say this every time, but we do we do this, and the state makes us do this for health reasons to make sure that people are getting their dogs vaccinated. It's not that we're trying to make money on this or or anything else. It's it's a health issue. All right, item 17, bid proposal on F350. Uh, we've been looking for a used pickup truck for a while now and have not found anything that really pans out correctly. Uh, we've found several new trucks in different car dealerships that would fit the bill and we've made up a, a invitation to bid on a one ton pickup truck for the town. The one ton would be the equivalent of the 550 we have out here except much more versatile. It can plow, it can carry a sander, but most importantly for the other 10 months of the year or eight months of the year. It can be used for all the utility purposes that currently we, other than the Dodge, we don't have something to fill. So we still wind up having a rather large truck go out with something that a pickup truck could do and say wear and tear on the larger trucks and just be more versatile, uh, which is what we're, we're really looking for. We have enough big things. We've kind of overlooked uh, something that it has more utilitarian value to it to do a whole bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, however, like I said, it can have a plow package in it, it can have a sander in it, a spreader, just like the one we have now. Because um, it's lower, it won't project it as much as, as it does off the Dodge, and it just will uh, suit a lot of the needs that, that the crew has. It's easier to go on small things with a proper vehicle than everyone, you know, Will this just be a standard pickup and won't have a flatbed body or anything else like that on it? Uh, no, it'll be a standard pickup. Standard pickup body. Yep. Okay. Well, the, you know, yeah, the standard pickup body is what we're planning. Although we had that discussion too of getting the frame and having a, a flatbed body put on it because you can do that relatively cheaply too. Like uh, a dump body, electric over hydraulic? No, 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 just, just a, a, a flatbed okay. body. Norm has one in, in North Bennington. Uh, People feel differently about it. It's, I'm not so sure which one is, the, is better. This be an ex extended cab or just a standard? It'd cab? be a standard cab. No, no extended cab. No. For, okay. No. Uh, yeah, it's just a regular cab. Uh, it's basically this Super Duty that that we found and uh, just added some things that that we need to it. It's it's all basic. But one of the problems we found with looking for a used pickup truck is used pickup trucks. Everyone has all these fancy packages in them, and we just and the interiors are too nice too for people to get in and out dirty all day, and, and they would just turn into a bit of a mess. Uh, if you go down to some dealers, you can find some base trucks, but it's easier just to order one, and because uh, we don't need any of the bells and whistles, we just need this regular four-wheel drive. F-350 to plow and to do utility work with. Gas, Joe. Gas, gas. No diesel, gas. <laughs> you're looking for late model used. No, we're looking for brand new. For brand new. Brand new. Because that'll last out. I mean, at some point, you keep going for used, and, and the used ones you find have yeah, problems. So and they've looked at a number of them. So does the Ford Super Duty, does that have the aluminum box? Uh, I don't know if this one would have the aluminum box. Yes. Does it? Pretty sure it will. Yeah, they're not that strong, aren't they? For for putting work into. I mean, 
people complain about them tearing? Haven't been able to find anything named two or three years old? No. Everything's all, uh, you know, you need a base truck. And yeah. people don't go out and buy those for themselves. People buy them for work, and then when you, they're ready to be sold, used, you don't want them. Have you priced yeah. Chevy and Dodge? Oh, well, everybody will, will get it. Yeah, okay. this, this is one that uh, was mentioned to us. A couple of us just went to look at and check the price out, and it comes in very competitively. We're not picking Fords, Dodges, Chevys. We're picking price. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if a Tundra comes in at the right price. I mean, you know, it's, price, is, price is the object here. I'm just using the 350 because people kind of understand what that is than, than the Tundra or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's a gas V8, six-speed heavy-duty transmission, uh, gross vehicle weight rating of 10.4, uh, heavy-duty suspension, a plow package, 40, 20, 40 buckets, uh, uh, integrated trailer brake controller, uh, electric mirrors, which are important, 3.73 uh, to 4.10 axle ratio, heavy duty batteries, uh, running boards, spray in bed liner, trailer hitch with a seven way tow package. It's not very affordable. Uh, now, you wanted to have a flatbed or just a, a regular box? No, your regular box. Okay. And you can put the, the spreader in chloride there. spreader in there. No, 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 not the chloride. Uh, sand, salt. Just the the sander. Yeah, this is like the yellow thing on the Dodge when we put that on. Okay. You know, and it has the same capacity as, as the 550, except it's not diesel. So. You said bucket seats. Well, they're not buckets. It's a, like a bench. But you know, but that, you can get three people. Yeah, in the front you can seat. get three people in. But we already have one five passenger truck and we have five people so they can still go somewhere if they want but that's not really I mean basically this is a one person two person truck to go out and do a small project or when we have people way out in the hollow you know you have a runner vehicle instead of sending you know a tandem or acting back and forth to get nothing even the Dodge is a little big you know, for, for a simple little chore yeah I'm just thinking if we don't have the crew cab on it it'd be nice to be able to get Three people in a pitch yeah. in there if we needed yeah. to transport. The cabs are definitely nice. Even if we don't have any anybody in the back, it's just a great place to stow stuff in the meantime if you're yeah. going to a job. Yeah. Well, you could probably get an extended cab, but uh, the crew cab is going to add a lot of money to it. The extended cab adds some, but the crew cab adds a lot. Mm -hmm. And you have to have a certain length of bed to put your sander in. <coughs> And so if you get a crew cab with the bed, you've got one hell of a long That's truck. That's what the Dodge is. Because mm -hmm. by the time you have the crew cab and the bed, it, it's longer than the 550. So you're looking at 20 feet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that Dodge is as long as one of your single axle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with the crew cabs. Yeah. And like I said, with one crew cab, I don't really know if we need another crew cab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what we can do is, is uh, put it out and uh, see what the bits come back as. So what do you want from us? Uh, just what we'll do with to put out a bid for uh, a 2017 one-ton pickup truck. Is there a motion? So moved. Tony has made a motion to uh, give Dave uh, approval to put out a bid for a. 2017 one ton pickup truck. Second. Second by Art. If it, if it comes in too high, we don't have to. No, there's no obligation to buy it. It's just right. uh, let's, let's get the, this out here. And we do have uh, the equipment reserve fund. Uh, and another aspect of this process of having someone retire is to, um, as we look towards options in, in plowing. We have a single axle that's coming up now that might lead to not replacing that, which is a very expensive truck. I mean, that you're talking about 150,000 now, so. Uh, are you thinking that to put a plow on this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sandra. What are you expecting for a plow? Uh, the plow specs we haven't done yet, but there's, uh, you can get anything from the 9 to 10 foot municipal plow to uh, a, a boss package, but that's. We haven't progressed that far yet. As long as the we'll truck is equipped, 
I'm sorry. I couldn't XDS hear. Fisher. I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Look into the XDS Fisher yeah. plow. Yeah. It's eight to ten foot. Mm -hmm. It's got a scoop. It'll go out and then scoop, or you can have an eight foot. They're they're really good plow. Yeah. What what prompted this, among a number of things, is our as we were looking at uh, the 550, which I didn't want to replace last year because we didn't have the money. Now I don't want to replace it at all. Uh, but to replace a 550 like the one we have here, that's the Ford. You're looking at basically $98,000 all beginning to end. And I can, I've already priced out uh, a 350, and just saying that, when I'm leaning towards Ford. That type of vehicle with a, and I just used Boss, not picking them either. But they're a plow package, they're a spreader, and I could actually buy two of these for the cost of buying a, f a five, you know, an equivalent to the Ford we have now. Yeah. So it's one of those plows are like six thousand. Yeah, yeah. Plow. yeah, yeah. And the sander, one to two yard sander, yeah. probably six. You know, it's important to start with with the truck that can handle it. Yeah. But then, you know, when you look at, at it, you can. I can literally almost get two of these for the same price. Right. And when you're talking about if, I mean, it's not going out into the hollow to plow. It would, would be plowing around here, where actually its size is more of a benefit. Because some of these, I mean, we hit a few mailboxes this year, uh, backing up. Because the trucks are large when you get in, especially back here. Uh, I forget that little street off of Cleveland that goes down, but uh, oh, middle lane. Or yeah, or thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so you know, there's there's areas where it's actually beneficial to have a smaller. Well, Bennett Bennett plows with either a tandem or single axle dump truck for the center of the road, and they follow it. Yeah. With a with a three fifty. Yeah. And lots of towns plow with three fifties. You know, maybe not so much right around here, there. but. Uh, yeah. I don't you know, I know right. bigger <laughs> communities and other areas that because it's not worthwhile keep maintaining a fleet of large trucks to do it so which is another reason why I'd like to look at, at having that starting one contract plow route this year which other towns do some have done it and gone back some keep trying but it's uh, I think it's worth looking into because it's a good option to the very expensive prospective staff Okay, any more discussion? All in favor of uh, giving Dave approval to seek bids for a 2017 110 pickup, say aye. 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 Motion is approved. 500. Zero, zero. All right, update of purchasing policy, elimination of redundant purchase order forms. We discussed this at a prior meeting right. and put it out there. You were going to talk to the uh, auditors about... Uh, yes, and the auditors, frankly, didn't understand why we were doing them. Uh, they said they, they rarely see them in a town this size. Part of it is we, it's, they're used to, if you have an encumbrance system where uh, I'm going to order something and it's going to arrive in mm -hmm. months. and You know, this is a much smaller... It, it actually adds a tremendous amount of paperwork and time. If, and as I said before, most of this wasn't being done when I got here, and it's still not... It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, it's it's just too burdensome. We're a one-man shop. Uh, everything that we do gets signed by me or Joe Vatican because he does purchases for the fire department separately uh, in most cases. But we're all on the same page, and every single thing above following the purchase the uh, purchasing policy, everything over the limits comes to the board for a vote before it can even be purchased. So. Uh, you know, everything over three thousand dollars has to be approved by the board before it's bought to begin with. So, it just seemed like a piece of paper that, frankly, most of the time, uh, when they were turned in, we would take our four-part carbon list. The person would copy the invoice onto the purchase order, put them together, and all four copies just wind up back in the filing cabinet. It's we don't have anyone to send them to, so it's just right. you know. <coughs> So what you circulated is our current purchasing policy approved in 2004 where you edited out the um, details about generating purchase orders. Purchase orders and the other one thing that was in here was uh, monthly the town administrator was to receive requests from all departments for 
stationary and things like that, which, you know, if Marlene needs something, she tells me, and I order from Staples on the computer, it's, right. you know, it's, and again, it's, it's just outmoded. It's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we need a motion to approve the uh, purchasing, po purchasing policy that was circulated this week, the amended purchasing policy. So we'll move by Ken. Second. Seconded by Art. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so the new purchasing policy uh, is approved by a vote of 500. Maybe it should say revised as opposed to amended. It, it is revised on, on the paper yeah. itself. It says revised this date. So, so okay. My yeah. point is let's make the motion say revised because that coincides. Okay, with yeah, that without outside. objection, the motion will read revised. That's it's just a small thing. Yeah. Okay, adoption of public records policy. It came to our attention that uh, the town lacked a formal uh, policy. And just to be clear, because I had one inquiry about this, mm -hmm. the public record inspection, copying, and transmission policy does not cover the town clerk. The town clerk is separate and sets her own rules. This has nothing to do with the town clerk. This has to do with coming into the town offices, requesting public records. The clerk uh, is totally separate, and this does not apply to the town clerk. Uh, that being said, uh, we took the basic recommendation from VLCT and sent it to the town attorneys to be vetted and to make sure that it fit all appropriate rules. Uh, this is essentially the VLCT that uh, Merrill uh, made some adjustments to for the town, but mainly in uh, making it clear that on the custodian of records, appeals to my decisions go to the chair of the select board, and then it proceeds down the legal course from there. But it sets parameters and standards that are acceptable under state law. Uh, it, we never had one here. We never had a reason to. Uh, I've talked with many people who have come in and just made copies and handed them whatever they wanted, but uh, uh, things just seem like, well, maybe we should have this formalized because it is recommended by the state and never had a reason to before, but uh, maybe it's just time to do it. Uh, yes, uh, so far all requests for public access to records mm -hmm. that have come in have been granted yeah. without interruption, uh, but it made us realize that uh, if we got a lot of requests or somebody came in and decided they just wanted to obstruct, uh, cause obstruction, which hasn't happened yet, that uh, uh, we could be, uh, we wouldn't be able to do anything if we haven't set a policy. So uh, it was prudent to, to set a policy and VLCT recommends that we have a policy. Uh, the policy also includes forms for people to request mm -hmm. public records on and requires that uh, any uh, denial of public records for legal reasons, of which there are a few, has to be uh, uh, submitted to the requester in writing, that sort of thing. Uh, sets, uh, adopts state guidelines for charging for copies and uh, gives the town uh, a few days, if necessary, to recover records that are not easily found or that are uh, large and require a lot of effort to, to come up with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as I said, this was all uh, has gone through legal review, and, and this is the form that they approved for us to adopt. Is that set, is that set to the limits? And how long anybody can? It provides guidelines. There's, there's actually would have to be taken on a case by case basis. You can't set exact guidelines. Is is my understanding of it? exact time frames. You can't say one hour limit. Right, uh, but by the same token, they can't come in and sit there and tie your time up or anybody in the office all day long to contend with. Everything would have to be evaluated based on the policy. 
and legal advice sought beyond that. Uh, open public records is a very uh, strongly supported by the state Supreme Court. I have no problem with it myself, but uh, it just was pointed out that this is a recommendation of VLCT to have and we don't have one and uh, should anything come up we should have something in hand that we can refer to. So we should implement that right away. Yeah, the board can Im implement anything uh, like in this nature. It's not an ordinance, it's just a, uh, a policy for us to follow. Back up a little bit, there was something there about time. If, 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 time, if time limits, let, uh, scroll down. If, if, the, if the time limits described have been extended to custodian and inform the request for food. Yeah, these are time limits for us to produce the records. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Short answer to your can answer. Short answer to your question, Ken, really is no. If somebody wants to come in and uh, inspect records all day long, um, we're pretty much obliged to let them do that. Uh, when they start making copies, we can charge them for copies, yes. including staff time. Uh, but if they just want to sit and look at stuff and we want to keep an eye on them and make sure that things don't get damaged or stolen or or uh, mistreated yeah, altered we have to uh, we have to obli uh, uh, oblige oh them. no i understand about the, the open part but i'm just saying yeah i just kind of feel that we ought to have something somewhere so that somebody could come in here and just tie it up so that they can't do anything else but maybe sit that. No, you, you cannot. Can, we can't do that. Yeah, no, we can't. Uh, we can request that they provide written requests for documents, and we can request that they specify in greater detail the documents they want if uh, we feel like they're uh, a lot and hard to come by. But in the end, um, if they want to come in and tie up Dave's time all day long looking at records, um, we have to oblige them. No, do they have to? Do, do they have to show any proof of, of uh, residency or no. citizenship as an American? No. No. They don't? No. No. It's not required. Oh. You, can't, you can't compel them. You can ask. But there's, there's no... They, they're just open records. Which, is, like I said, I've not encountered a problem with it. Uh, people come in all the time and you usually pull it out and then they want to talk about it. And you look at it, you don't even want to making a copy. You know, but uh, you know, uh, if someone wants, we, we to realize that that we should have a policy, yeah. and we're recommended by VLCT to have a policy. And the town's attorney strongly recommends it too. Yeah. So we should follow along. Yeah, yeah, probably should have had one before. Need a motion? Yes. I make a motion. We adopt the proposed policy approved by VLDC and. Gone over by our attorney. We have a motion from Art to ad adopt the the proposed public records public public records act policy as uh, outlined by VLCT and amended by town attorney. Mm -hmm. Second. Seconded by Ken. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So the uh, Public Records Act policy is adopted by a vote of 500. I need just the chair to sign that. That's how they have this one for some reason. Is that, is that one time truck we're looking for a dual or just single? Single. No duals. Thank you. Okay. Very good, Dave. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. And. Item 20, placeholder, town garage updates. The first update we have is uh, the bond is moving along. Uh, I was having some conversations with our bond attorney and Bob Giro at the bond bank today in just the way we, we park. Because we're taking $75,000 a year uh, to pay for the bond, we have to kind of jump through these hoops because we have to park the money until we get the bill. And of course, when we put it in our bank account, it gains interest. Uh, we, had, we, we can't make more interest than the interest being charged on the bond, which currently 
isn't very hard to do because we get really <laughs> <interested in that. laughs> But because of the length of the bond, they, we have to figure out a method to uh, protect it because in five years, we could maybe be making a lot of interest and the bond could still be low. So, uh, Melly and I discussed a few things. Bob, you know, the, in the bond council with the, the bond bank and our bond attorney are just going to figure it out. I think the simplest solution would be we will create yet another bank account and just take the 75000 that's approved or in the budget and just put that directly in that bank account. Because what can happen over the course of this is the IRS, because you're dealing with the IRS, uh, could come and want an audit of that. And it'd be easier to audit one bank account than to say, oh, well, it's in the general fund and all this. Uh, they, they had suggested that maybe we could have it in the general fund and it would just be, we use this. But I pointed out that we've said all along that this is specifically dedicated to the garage and there's no way of going about what we've been saying all along. So I think the simple solution is just create a bank account, take the 75000 annual, which halfway through it will actually be less than 75000 every year anyway, and uh, just put it in one account. That's the account. That's where the money is. If you want to inspect the interest, it'll be a lot cheaper for them to audit the one account than go through all our books. Uh, so. I'll let you know what the final decision on that is. We'll see. Forty years ago, that was a very common thing to borrow yes. to oh. get a bond, or put it in the bank, yeah, m make money on you know, make yep. interest on mm -hmm. the money. Yeah, it's kind of funny because we signed all this non-arbitrage stuff to get the bond, <laughs> but they still, you know, this apparently caught their attention that oh, you know, you're going to have this money, then where are you going to have it? It's like, well, I mean, it, they have a point. Down the road, this could be flipped. You know, we could be making a lot of interest uh, quickly. I doubt it, but they could, you know. But so we'll figure out whatever we have to do yeah. to okay. make the IRS happy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, meeting meeting on Wednesday, Wednesday at one. Oh, it's at one now? It's at one, yes. At the station. Yeah, at the station. It was at two ten, so you may want to maybe already know. Yeah, I reminded I Yeah, I think mentioned. I got that uh, update. That's the Bennington Station yep. restaurant? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Remind me what we're meeting about? Uh, this is this is Goldstone and the RFP, and we're meeting with Goldstone, MSK. Uh, we'll sign the actual contract, but uh, I think it's important uh, for the chair and, and, and the art to be there because It's a lot of money. Right. And they sent us a, uh, a contract. Yes. And we only changed a tiny bit of it, right? Yes. In that line there, and I just turned off my computer, but we added in, I can't read that. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Let's see. Scope of services per attachment and The, the attachments are, are made part of the contract. So the, is, this wording here is a little different, right? Or is this that's the, final? the That's the original. That's the original, right. And this, so uh, I bring that up with me. what I was looking for was uh, where it said in here specifically, everything in the contract looked like exactly what we wanted except where it said in the RFP that we're, they were going to help us evaluate bids that we got from an engineering point of view. And uh, they fa apparently felt it was covered in this other provisions, scope of services per attachment, town of Shaftesbury RFP, and the town attorney recommended we change that word. Incorporated wording a bit. therein. Yeah, say that again. Incorporated therein. Scope of services per attachments uh, incorporated therein. So, so just legally to say everything that we asked for in the RFP, they will do. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And the so the meeting on Wednesday is to uh, discuss this contract, and then we'll bring it back here for approval after that. Uh, I think the board should uh, make a motion to uh, amend the contract to include those words. I'll give them to you specifically in one minute. <coughs> because to do otherwise would 
cause delay because that's the only thing that's been changed. I believe I sent that as part of the form. So you want to go ahead and uh, I think approve this contract tonight? Could give Tim the authority to sign it up. Yeah, if, if because the, everything's the same except the adding of two words on our attorney's advice to just make sure that we can hold that the RFP and the proposal are incorporated within the contract. Okay. Right, it's taking, it's taking a little time here. Let's see if up. I can find it. Yeah, it, it, the, we, the renewed one should have been in the dropouts, I believe. <coughs> Okay, Article 7, I think that means 17 on advice of yes. council. We're changing the language to scope of services per attachment incorporated in full. <coughs> yes. The attachments are a town RFP and Goldstone proposal. So we're just changing s scope of services per attachment to scope of services per attachments incorporated in full. And that's the only change in the whole document. I move we accepted this. We accept this proposal with the change as so shown, and give Tim the authority to sign the contract. All right. Okay. We have uh, a motion from Art. To modify the contract received from Goldstone to say in Article 17, scope of services per attachment incorporated in full, and to authorize the chair to sign the contract. Is there a second? Okay. Seconded by Ken. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> that motion is approved 500. Other business? Um, the only other business I would have is come on the board. I'll be going on vacation Friday and we'll be back uh, June, July 10th. Uh, and as usual, I'm crazy and I travel with my laptop, so I'll be keeping up on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we hope you have fun. We'll be fine. <laughs> well, we guys. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, all, we, all, we all muddle for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other business? Uh, I wonder, the executive session. Uh, I guess maybe we should have a brief one. Okay. Although I don't, we'll, the topic really doesn't apply anymore. Okay. It's up to you. You called it. Uh, I would. I would pass on it. I don't really have anything to say on it now. All right. We can skip executive mm -hmm. session. Uh, reviewing action items. We're still carrying a couple from. Back in April, related to water board uh, review of water department regulations by Jim McGinnis and discussion between Jim and Dave about uh, the water board's uh, handling of the new assistant uh, salary. You know, just a uh, slide on that. Uh, Jim was originally going to be here. We were going to have a water board tonight. Uh, when we talked about that a couple months ago, uh, the Jim and his dates mixed up and. Uh, his granddaughter's graduating college, that's why we're not doing it now. We've already discussed and, and rectified all this stuff and have the water department budget uh, all done, except for Jim's uh, salary. Mm -hmm. So we will be bringing that up probably at July 17th. We'll have a water board uh, to that. And what, what the water board decides for Jim's salary will work out uh, retroactively. But the uh, overall budget is uh, not changing at all for the water department. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's all pretty much just the same. And uh, the assistant salary part that was you all talked about. That's, yeah, that's all leveled out. Okay. And it, it appears uh, it's, it's just the same as a wash. You know, it's just changing titles and, and turns into nothing. All right. Um, we had a note to include the RFP in the minutes for 5-1, and that was in there tonight, so uh, uh, that's taken care of. We uh, had a note about uh, giving Dave 
uh, uh, approval to pursue the sidewalk scoping grant and we discussed tonight we're going to put that on hold for a while uh, at our meeting on the 5th we had given Dave a, uh, a charge to look at uh, signage for uh, using Jake brakes in town and causing noise and Dave looked into that and the state said no no take care of it. Uh, it turns into a, a matter of safety Jake brakes were a recognized safety device on heavy trucks and we put signs up saying don't use them when you're on a downhill into a village is highly not recommended you do see engine brakes in some towns the signs are not approved and they're not uh, recommended. Uh, they don't have to be followed by the no. truckers and they know that. There's probably no enforcement to them. You can't enforce them. Yeah, the only thing that way you could enforce it is to have uh, the state truck unit here with a decibel meter and see if they're exceeding it. And, uh, uh, because that's what was suggested that modern trucks really well, wouldn't, wouldn't be making don't. this noise unless they, it was tampered with. Yeah. But again, having a guy sit here for hours on end waiting for a truck to come through. I'm sure and I appreciate that in the middle of the night if someone decides they're going to use it it's going to resonate in some neighborhoods. Sorry Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Those truck drivers love it though. You know, it's got to be fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. But then the newer trucks, the even if they're using it, they don't they don't make that no, kind of don't. noise. They don't make the noise. Either. Yeah. The other, other items from our uh, uh, June 5th meeting have been dealt with. The RFP got distributed. I signed the uh, trustees bank documents in front of the notary. Um, we edited the host town agreement and dealt with that tonight. And uh, Dave did his homework on the purchasing policy and we approved that tonight. Um, action items I caught this evening for us to look into. Dave's going to look at the status of that sign replacement program we signed yeah. off on. Uh, Put on White Creek Road. It, it's for the White Creek Road. Yeah, it's for the White Creek yeah. Road. Yeah, it was part of that. Yeah. And then uh, Dave's going to look and see if uh, Green Mountain Power will help us with some of our uh, tree problems. Was there any others that uh, anybody remembers? I had a thought, Tim. Uh, would it be worth, Dave, um, you say you got 20 covers to put in? 17. 17? <clears throat> Would it be worth considering maybe just putting out a bid to what anybody with local contractors would uh, bid on putting those in for some of them? Uh, there's a possibility of that. Uh, I, I think we can work the schedule so that we can do it. Uh, we we're going to have the decision on that in a couple of days because uh, some are very short, some are just segments, some are, are long and, and larger, but um, it's possible to, to put in two a day, larger ones one a day. Um, I think we can we can do it in the schedule. Okay, I was just thinking that maybe yeah. it would help the town go in yeah. might be able to save some money your budget. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how it would work. But. Uh, I think uh, of all the things, the uh, culverts were probably the easiest thing for us to do because we have all the equipment. Uh, the materials are, are minimal. Uh, and we definitely have the equipment to do it, so yeah. we, we can do that. Where, where I was thinking if we went for construction contracts would be on one of the uh, longer fabric projects uh, in some combination. Like we would, when Perrin Road was done, we had basically a couple of equipment operators on the contract and we were doing all the trucking and everything but in my vision of going out for a contract we would have a contractor do one whole project yeah beginning to end meanwhile we're doing an equivalent project and you know we're moving forward but I don't really see the point in putting out a contract to have someone run a grader and a bucket loader when we got graders and bucket loaders what I need is yeah. dump trucks to feed them yeah, you know, and that's what we're doing on, on as we looked at East Road and West Mountain and things. We need it's easy to get drivers to bring loads to the site. Yeah, it's usually like eighty-five dollars an hour, but you know, as long as the greater operator is being fed and, and can keep moving, you know, that's the with key. no big blacktop 
contracts this year, maybe our person that usually does the black time would be interested in doing a job like yeah. that. Yeah, well, that's the thing, you know, put it out there and see what's uh, available, you know. Uh, the, like I said, the first thing uh, I want to clear is, is where we stand on, on trees. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we, we can play with all this um, and see where the schedule goes. But I, I, I agree, there's, there, there's certain areas, I know some people are having trouble getting contracts to do things, other things, uh, the money hasn't come around here this year for the pavement grants, so, uh, you know, there might be somebody out there who can do something for a reasonable price. You know, it's, it's pretty similar, pretty similar work. Okay. Um, covers the action items. We decided we don't need executive session to discuss personnel. In that case, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Hart, seconded by Ken. All in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned.